Soy Katherine y sean todos bienvenidos a esta sección de entrevistas. En esta ocasión realizamos una entrevista a la múltiple campeona mundial, europea y belga de Canicross y Valkyrie, Tessa Philippines. Sin más preámbulos, empecemos con la entrevista. At what age did you start practicing Canicross and biking? Um, I started around, I think I was 14. Um, then I got um, uh, my first dog, she was a whippet. And um, I started, uh, after she was one year old, I started to do canning cross with her. So I guess it was around 14. Okay. The 14 years I'm running now. <laughs> <laughs> And before mushing, did you play another sport? Um, yes, I did. I started with swimming actually, and then um, after some years, I started also in uh, on gymnastics. I think it's called. And um, I was very active in gym gymnastic class, so they sent me to track and field <laughs> after. And they said I would make a good runner, so um, they sent me to track and field. And then uh, I think I was seven, seven, eight years old when I was doing a little bit gymnastics and track and field at the same time. Um, but then eventually I started to do gymnastics, uh, do track and field only, I mean. And uh, then I got involved at the age of 13, 14, I guess, with um, Canyon Cross. And how did you know this sport? What was the main reason you started practicing it? Mm, I always wanted to have a dog. And um, my father, he, um, uh, when our first dog died, he said he would never ever want a dog again because he never wanted to experience that he has to bury his dog uh, again. So, um, but I was very up to having another dog. So I was nagging and nagging at him to get one and they were very stubborn and always said no but um at a certain point i had to do in track and field a lot of um like endurance runs uh just uh by myself and um i thought it was very boring so i was not very motivated to do it so um, after a while my father thought that um, yeah maybe we could get a dog and that could like motivate me or help me to do this long endurance runs together with my dog so he asked me one day like oh if you uh, if we buy you a dog will you go and uh, do those runs and I said, of course i said yes so uh, <laughs> so then we got our first dog and uh, it was a whippet and um She was a really good runner, so it was not a problem. <laughs> and um, yeah, after a year, then my father saw like, because in the first I was just holding her with a leash on the collar in my hand. And then uh, my father saw online like, hey, there's this race where you can like run with your dog. And I uh, said, that's uh, something for you. Um, maybe you should give it a try. So uh, we tried the first race and then uh, we were like hooked. <laughs> after that, we were com competing in every race. Even though I finished last in the first race, I didn't care. I was, I thought it was so cool. So uh, we just continued and grew with the sport. Actually, there's Petty. Oh, oh. <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
want to say hi to you. <laughs> he wants to be interviewed too. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> so, when you started in this sport, you were as good as you are now? No, um, I was I was a good runner myself, but um, it is kind of different to run with the dogs. It's much faster than uh, you know, I was used to. So, um, in the beginning, my dog also didn't understand what was the point of uh, this running. So, uh, she was not pulling very much the first races and the first trainings. But uh, once we got like more involved and uh, trained more and everything, then she got it, and then we just like grew every year. We turned better and better. And now, do you have any special routine for your workouts? Um, yeah, I I wouldn't really I I I can just tell what I do. I don't think it's that's super special, but um. For myself, for example, I think it's very important to drink a lot before training. So um, I uh, kind of used to drink like this energy electrolyte drink so that I am very well hydrated um, and also have some extra energy for when I'm running. And then um, warming up is, of course, very important. Um, so I always do a warm up and some like. Um, I don't know what it's called, like this um, uh, extra exercises. Um, I think they're called like ABC exercises. I don't remember how it's actually called in English. Um, like some speed ups. And then I would like start with my training. And um, after my training, of course, so we also have a cool down, which is super important. Um, and that's like basically for myself. I don't know if you want to know for the dogs also, or if it's yes, that would be life. that would be amazing. What yes. you do with your dogs? For the dogs, it's kind of the same principle. So I never um, train or run with them um, if I don't have like four to five hours before training. Then they don't get any food. So oh, I always okay. want them to be like on an empty stomach to like avoid stomach turns and everything. Um, but then two hours before uh, the training run, they get like a lot of water, which I think is super important. It's like for us, we need to be hydrated. So uh, and they they really need to need to be hydrated because they don't sweat and like us the same as we do. Um, so then they get also like this. I, I have like this special uh, electrolyte drink from uh, Mammut, and it has also some extra energy, um, which is more than enough for my dogs to complete the training and um, after the training I would yep, I also warm my dogs up for uh, five minutes or something uh, just walk with them and uh, let them do whatever they have to do <laughs> before the training and uh, after the training I also cool them down a little bit so I also go jog down a little bit for five minutes um, they also get their water with some like recovery shake, basically for dogs it is. Um, so it helps with like uh, with the recovery afterwards also. And again, they get uh, a lot of water inside, which is important for the rehydration. Um, do I think about something else? Yeah, like around maybe half an hour, one hour after they run, they get their food that they were supposed to get also. What about the harness? Did you put the harness in your dogs uh, just for training or they have it since they get up? Or? Um, I usually teach them from like when they are really young. I teach them when, from when they're puppy actually, I teach them when they are attached on the collar. They're not allowed to pull. And when they have the harness on, they're allowed to pull. So, um, in the beginning, I only like to put on the harness when they are pulling, even when it's just walking with them and that they are just allowed to pull a little bit or when it's training. But afterwards, when they know the difference between when they are only wearing a collar or when they're or when they're wearing a harness, um, I do sometimes uh, let them, for example, free run with, um, with the harness on. Um, but I think the smartest thing to do is to, whenever they free run, not to have a harness on. 
um, and just to, so that they like really know what the difference is between these two things. Uh, how many dogs do you have now? Um, I have four dogs. Um, one, the oldest one, he moved back to Belgium together with my parents. Um, he's 10 years old now. His name is Yukon. Um, he was my first like, sled dog. Um, then I have Unix. She is an um, Alaska Husky. Um, she's six years old now, I think. Um, then I have Lichi. She is a Scandinavian hound. She is five years old. And then I have Petted, like you said. So he was the one who just <laughs> showed up and said hi. Um, he is um, a little bit over one year old now. And um, he is uh, the, like the first dog we had from our own litter. And do you compete with everyone? Uh, yes, all of them compete. Um, yeah, Yukon of obviously no longer because he um, is on a pension now. <laughs> and um, Unix, she is kind of more of my training partner because she's really small. She's like 19 kilo and she has a really nice size to run with and train with. And she's also sometimes um, a little bit stressed or scared. So um, I use her in competitions, but um, not for like big championships because that would be for her mentally too much stress. But she likes to run and race and uh, as long as she doesn't get pushed too much, then uh, she does a good job. And Lichi, I also run with her. I do actually everything with her from ski terrain to bike, scooter, uh, candy cross. And that pet did, yeah, he is just starting to train now. So. Uh, and did you look for any special characteristic in the dogs to focus them on a discipline? Or uh, you just take all of them to all the disciplines? No, it's a little bit like, um, of course, I like to do train a little bit everything with them. But I have four different dogs and all four of them have like a better, um, are, they are better in some disciplines than the others. For example, Yukon, he was very good in bike touring, uh, also in Canic was of course, but in bike touring he was just like, uh, that was his thing. Um, Unix, for example, is really good in Canic Rust, but she's also super fast, so um, she she's really good in like two dog, uh, scooter, um, uh, bike touring probably also, but she doesn't like to run in front of a bike alone, so, um, a little bit difficult there. Uh, Lichi, she is also really good for canny cross, but at the same time, she's really good in bike touring because she's so smart. So uh, with the directions and everything, she's pretty fast also. So um, she's a really good dog for that. Um, Petit, for example, um, he will be like a really good dog for a scooter because he is so big and tall. Um, so he's a really strong dog. I don't think he will be like super fast for uh, the bike um, but he will probably run also good in canny cross because um, he is pretty strong um, the only question is there if he is not going to be too big <laughs> for me <laughs> to run with so yeah so you test them so you can see where they are good at yeah. yes and also for example if there's a race with a um, really flat trail or uh, some hills in there, I can just decide, okay, I know this dog is better in this type of trail, so that weekend we will race with this dog, and the other weekend we will race with the other dog, and it's a little bit like that. How did you reinforce the directions with your dogs? Um, I do it already when I'm like walking with them in forest, from when they are really small, whenever I go to the left or wanna go to the left, I just tell them to the left, and if by wonder they would go to the left, I will just say like, oh, good girl, good boy, or whatever. And um, they actually get it really fast if you just do it this way. Um, and you're not doing any harm because uh, they're not like really training. So my dogs actually know before I start running with them, they actually already know uh, left and right. And how did you prepare them for a competition? Days before, do you have some change? Yeah. Like uh, before big competitions, for example, the week before, 
those competitions we will not train that hard because we want the dogs to recover completely um so that their muscles and everything are um, in best shape possible shape for the uh, weekend um but they will get some exercise but it will just be like very short very controlled not too fast just to be sure also they don't injure themselves <laughs> right before an important race because that's usually where it happens <laughs> um so they get like i try to get uh, give them plenty of water the whole week so that they are very well hydrated um um yeah, and just not too much training, actually. What did you feed them with? Uh, do um, you have the same diet all the year, or you have some changes before big competitions? Um, I kind of have like racing season and summer season. Um, in summer, they get like a little bit less high energy food. Um, I give my dogs dry food and meat because i think it works the best for my dogs um so um like in the racing season they get like more energy high energy and fat uh, food than they get in summer uh, but they will still get like meat and dry food both in like on season and off season and do you think they enjoy canicross and bike and scooter as you do? Yeah, I think they are sometimes even more crazy than me because I am, I am the one who's yelling that they have to slow down. <laughs> and uh, whatever I am putting on my running shoes or whatever sports clothes, they are already barking in the hallway, ready to, <laughs> ready to go and train. Um, sometimes I have to disappoint them because I am going to train all by myself. <laughs> So uh, there, you, I think you can really see that they they like this, even yeah. though that my dogs do like free running, they do some uh, agility, um, they do other stuff. They really love to run and pull. They get so crazy when they see a harness or the bike or the scooter. Uh, yeah. Do you think it's important to do other activities with them? Like you say, you do agility with them, no? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's sometimes it is important because um, maybe, for example, I am injured now, so I could not train my dogs as much as I wanted or um, so for some months not at all. So then um, I do, for example, this um, just normal obedience training with some of these balance uh, pads where they have to like balance themselves on. Um, so that they can still train and do something and accept uh, instead of just sitting still the whole day and um, this agility thing I made for example like this course in my garden so they can just enjoy themselves a little bit and stay a little bit active um, I think it also helps them to not always uh, like my Alaska Nuski she gets really stressed if she has to um, pull every day then she gets really stressed so whenever I introduce some of this type of training in between, then she gets mentally very relaxed from it. And then she actually runs better also um, in canicross or a bike or scooter. And what kind of advice did you give us during the competition, after the competition to improve in the sport? Um, I think the most important is the hydration part. I think there's many people that don't know that uh, you should like give water uh, to your dogs uh, to uh, around two to one hour maximum before you go running. Um, I think it's also important to know that you should not really feed your dog um, before you go training. Um, and if you do, you can feed them a couple of hours before, but then it should be like a really small portion. Um, if you think he needs it, but my dogs, they basically always run on an uh, empty stomach. Uh, this has never been a problem. Um, something that is also very important is just always to remember the warm up. Um, I think that's maybe the most important important thing is the warm up to like um, uh, to not get any injuries in yourself and their dogs. Um, the cool down is also still important. Um, and uh, just to feed you, <laughs> to remember to feed your dog also after you train because uh, he needs the, 
get some energy and some proteins and uh, fat back into the system. Um, yeah, I think that's like the most important stuff that people should remember. And also, that's something that's probably important is that people, um, they really like to train together with their dogs. I understand this. But um, in some way, to get better, you sometimes have to train yourself also separately, apart from these trainings you have with your dog. Um, because very often the dogs are in better shape than the humans. <laughs> and so it's only us who are, are struggling to keep up with them. So, um, yeah, I think that's an important point also. And um, what about your breeding cold climates? I think in, I live now in Norway and I'm not that used to that cold weather either. Um, but for me, it's actually not a problem to run in cold weather. Um, but um, I know here in Norway, whenever it's under 15 minus degrees Celsius, they um, kind of um, cancel like all races and trainings because it's too cold. And that's where it gets bad for the lungs. Um, but you can keep on training and those temperatures if you like don't go uh, really deep like do really tough um, exercises outside they also have like a special mouthpiece for example that you can put in your mouth which is actually warming up the uh, air a little bit before you breathe it in but I, I have never used it uh, myself but I think actually um, the cold weather is makes it for me e a little bit easier to breathe than in hot weather <laughs> What technique do you use when you run in the snow? I only run a couple of times myself in the snow here. I um, didn't do it very often in winter either because I was injured. But um, whenever it's like deep snow, I don't think it's really that good to run. But um, whenever the snow has like been like packed for a couple of days, um, then I use like this um, almost crampons, we call it. It's like this thing with pins on that you can put over your shoe um, so whenever there is like a little bit ice layer or something under the snow then you still have like a lot of grip and you can just uh, it, it feels basically like you're uh, wearing cross-country spikes when you're doing a uh, uh, cross, uh, cross-country race in the mud or something yeah. that's like good. and what technique do you use running in mud um in mud I think uh, there, first of all, the shoes are very important that you're wearing. Um, so like shoes with a lot of grip is pretty smart when you're running in uh, mud. Um, then I think I tend to make a slightly smaller steps because if I make super big steps and if the mud is really um, deep, then I get you get really tired. So I kind of adjust my um how do you call it i kind of adjust my pace like also made the strides a little bit shorter so that i can keep on continuing at that same pace uh the whole time and what about the arm movement at the time of running is it important yes um it is the arms are pretty important because um I don't know if you've noticed, but the faster you can move your arms, automatically the legs are uh, following uh, with this movement. Um, in candy cross, I think the arms are in like, for example, downhills and stuff like that, not so important. Um, there you can actually use your arms to like hold balance when you have to go down um, because you're going so fast anyway. But um, for the uphill and like, flatter parts I can say that if you are very good in using actively your arms uh, automatically your um, legs will follow better and um, also your whole posture kind of changes if you use uh, the arms also correctly. You have been in mass starts don't you? Yes. And how what do you do you take account when mass starts and uh, how do you control your dogs um 
Firstly, I think it is very important to try to um, train this when you're in training with friends. For example, try to go out with a group of uh, five people or two or three, even doesn't really matter, and try to like um, replicate the sort of a uh, mass start um, so that the dogs get used to this extra stress. Because I see, for example, my dog, Yukon uh, also, he was always really good in single starts, but whenever it was mass start, then... Uh, then he uh, sometimes uh, totally lost control. Um, but I was very good in reading him, so um, usually it was not a problem, but there has also been um, incidents with him. Um, so I think the best thing is to try to teach this in uh, like training environment first, and uh, with dogs that you know that are nice. Um, also, it's very much easier to control um, if something goes wrong in training than in a race. Because um, something I noticed also in racing is that, of course, people uh, want to go as fast to the finish line when they have this BIP number um, on them. Um, so usually if there is something happening with their dogs, the people are kind of accepting it that their dog is doing something wrong and just continue to run instead of stopping and correcting this wrong behavior. Because I think the worst thing somebody can do in a mass start is when your dog bites is to just continue running because then my dog kind of learned, oh, I'm allowed to bite and I can just continue running. So um, I think that's the worst thing ever. So if my dog bites, I stop, I correct him. I uh, had one race where this happened. I was standing in the first line. Um, he tried to jump on a dog next to him to bite it and I just took him out of the race. Um, I corrected him. I wait till everybody pa everybody started and then I started again all by myself back the whole pack and then I was overtaking people again and then he didn't do anything anymore to any dogs. But there he learned okay this is this is not okay. Um, this is not uh, tolerated. I'm not allowed to run. I, I cannot continue to run if I bite. Um, it's, uh, so uh, that's one of the things you can do. Um, another thing is some dogs just cannot handle this mass start stress. Um, if you know this, um, I don't know if in races in uh, where you live are uh, allowed to run with a muscle. Yes. Um, Belgium, they are allowed to run with a muscle. Um, so uh, it can be an option to do this if you are uh, unsure about your dog, but I don't think it is a solution to the problem. Um, because if your dog with a muzzle attacks another dog, still, for that dog, it still feels that he got attacked, even though that he cannot physically get bitten, but mentally, it's the same thing. Um, also, if you have this dog, and you know, for example, that your dog is only reactive in the mass start itself, like maybe after 500 meters, if you have to overtake somebody, he will not do anything, then it would be pretty smart to just let all the people who are standing on the first row, just let them go, let them run. Um, and you can just wait yourself, sometimes five seconds, even wait till they are gone. And then you just start behind with your dog, just to avoid this clash of um, all the dogs together. The handler, what do you think about it? Do you use handlers when you are in biking? Um, I never really use a handler. Because I want my dogs to be nice and quiet and stand still. Um, because um, yeah, when I am training, like I said, I am always alone. So I have to be able to control my dogs myself. And I'm also starting sometimes in two dogs. I'm starting with a sled with four dogs. And I just take them one by one and put them in front of the sled. And they know they have to wait and stand still before I go. Uh, in training, I know they are very good at this. But in races... Where the stress level is higher, there I there I do kind of. So I, it depends. So if I have somebody who can help, um, then they usually help. But all the one dog stuff is actually kind of okay. Um, in races, when it starts from two dogs, then I kind of like a handler, uh, just because so much stuff can go get messed up and uh, wrong. And what do you think the handler should do? And what um, characteristic they should have? I think your handler should be one person. It should be somebody who knows what he's doing. So not just say like, 
hey you there uh, can you hold my dog yeah you can you can do this when it is like in, when you really need help and there is nobody else but um, it is nicer that uh, your dog kind of knows the handler and that your handler is calm and knows exactly what he has to do um, I usually just ask them to hold them with the collar like not like hold them like down but like just hold them if something goes wrong or if he would take off his harness or the leg goes uh, over the leash or whatever that he can just fix it and uh, the dog just has to learn also to stand still a little bit so but he's just holding them with the harness and a little bit with the collar and just standing there and um trying to comfort them some of my dogs they are very stressed so those it helps just to pet them a little bit um and just to tell them that they have to be quiet and calm sometimes um but uh, I think it's very important that your handler is like a calm person. I think it helps the dog to calm down. Because my dogs, when I am stressed, they are stressed. So if the, at least the handler is calm, then <laughs> it usually helps. <laughs> it helps a lot. And what has been the biggest difficulty you have faced training your dogs? Um, I think the most difficult thing was probably with my Alaskan Husky because um, she ran really well from the start uh, until I had an accident with my scooter and um, she got she was running in like two dog scooter together with my other Yukon with the crazy dog and um, he dragged the scooter behind him and she was terrified of the scooter but he doesn't care about the scooter so he just continued uh, with the scooter and dragging her and she was panicking and looking behind at this thing that was making noise um, and afterwards she wouldn't want to run alone in front of the scooter anymore um, because she was terrified of it from because of that accident um, but then with like a lot of positive training training in groups uh, stuff like this she actually got a lot better and uh, then unfortunately at one race she got um she got like attacked by twice by the same dog and uh since then she is like very sometimes very panicking when people are overtaking us or when i have to overtake somebody she slows down and then uh, once i have overtaken a person she will speed up like hell to run away from the dog um just because she had these bad, very bad uh, situations uh, there. So it's not um, it's not always only fun. It's very many things that can go wrong. Also, um, she still I, I know she loves to run. She's barking when she wants to run and stuff like this. But um, yeah, she has like kept some traumas from certain situations. So people should kind of understand also that. Um, for example, if your dog bites, you can like destroy another. Even though that she didn't have anything physically, the dog just like snapped at her and uh, almost almost grabbed her. Uh, she was just like yeah, mentally she couldn't cope with it afterwards. So you can destroy somebody else's dog for the rest of uh, their career. <laughs> so um, yeah, so we should be conscious of what the things that our dogs do can do to the other dogs. Yeah, it can have a very good, great, a uh, very big impact on somebody else's dog. Even though for you, you would think like, ah, but your dog doesn't have anything physically. Uh, no, yeah, that's true. But uh, still, your dog snapped. And if I maybe would not have stopped or stood still, he would have had the chance to really grab her, you know, it is... Uh, it's always uh, like this. I think in any case, uh, a dog, biting dog is not okay. Even dogs that like to play, for example, there's dogs that are one overtake, like petted. When he's overtaking his mother, he always wants to play with her, but he is so big, so the mouth goes open. And, uh, he does exactly the same like when he plays with her at home, but I know this is not allowed. He's not allowed to do this. So I correct this uh, behavior. He is not allowed to play even though I know that, they, that, that what he is doing is not aggressive. He's not allowed to disturb or bother any dogs in a race. The only thing he has to do is to run straight past them. And what has been the biggest difficulty you have faced in the sport generally? Um, I don't know. I guess it's 
maybe <laughs> probably now <laughs> i have been uh, struggling a little bit with my health the last years and um every time i'm thinking like now i'm getting better and then i start to train up again and then it's something else <laughs> that uh, shows up so um now i've been struggling since october with a fracture in my foot that uh, doesn't want to heal for example and then then the doctors figure out uh, some new problems that are the cause of this um uh, of this fracture so then we have to try to fix that and every time we get <laughs> we get further so um, i try not to lose uh, motivation but um sometimes it's very hard to just not give up and just say like i quit <laughs> yeah but we should try to don't give up yeah. and what would be your dream to carry out as an athlete What's um, that thing that you want and you are working for? I don't know. I was like, um, I kind of achieved almost everything in the like, Canic Cross that I want. Um, it's always nice to have one more title or one more <laughs> medal, of course. But um, uh, I think it's also kind of interesting to get better in, for example, bike touring or uh, to get better in scooter or to get better in ski touring. So I always have like something I want to be better at or get better at. Um, the last years, my goal was to try to see how good I could be in track and field, like without my dogs. Um, but uh, that kind of um, <laughs> turned out not that good since I am <laughs> injured all the time now <laughs> or sick. So um was not that successful. Um, even though that I ran times that I was very happy with, uh, after I like started, I started to run like, uh, for two years properly again with a good trainer, track and field. And, um, then I could see what progress I made. Also in Candy Cross, I run much faster than I, I did before. Um, unfortunately all the other athletes get better as well. So they run faster also every year. Um, um but it was nice to see how big the impact was of just part of working on myself um, to get better myself. Who do you admire inside the sport and why? Um, I think there's many people I admire in the sport. Um, for example, in Candy Cross, it will probably be Martina Stepankova. She has uh, one or two kids now. I, I already don't remember, but I know she has kids. Um, She is actually a veteran already, and she is still running faster than uh, than us. <laughs> and she's maybe 15 years or 20 years older than us. Um, yeah, I think that's amazing how she can uh, still be at the top at that age. And she's not only in the top in Candy Cross, she's at the top in everything she does. If she decides to start in scooter, she will beat everybody in scooter. If she tries to do a ski touring, she will also end up at least top five or top three in uh, ski touring or puka. Um, I think that's amazing. Um, in bike touring also, there are some athletes that are just like Holma Bergman uh, from Sweden. She is amazing on the bike. Um, there's so many people, so many good athletes that are, uh, yeah, that are just so unbelievably good. <laughs> And I think it is, uh, it is inspiring to see people like that. When you started in the sport, do you think that you will uh, be where you are now? Did no. you imagine that? No, I never imagined that. Um, but at the time, I was like at the top in Belgium in track and field. Um, uh, when I started with Candy Cross, but um, Candy Cross was such a totally different sport and I was a lot I, like used to run one kilometer uh, on the track and like Candy Cross is around three kilometers so it was something I was not really used to do either um, so at the beginning I just thought it was fun and uh, of course once you start growing and growing you start to be like oh I want to be Belgian champion okay I have been a couple of times Belgian champion and oh maybe maybe I can try to race at the European championship one time and then I run at the first time at the European Championship. I turned out to have uh, fifth place. Uh, 
Then a year after, I ran the world championship uh, with another dog, though, know, but uh, with Yuko, that's one. And then I end up first place, totally unexpected. So uh, then you start to believe in yourself, and you know, like, okay, I can, I can do this. I can, I can maybe get even better than I am now. Um, but I didn't think at it at all when I started. Then I was just having fun with my dog. <laughs> And uh, just thinking how much fun it was just to be able to run with her. And now, what is your concept of winning? Is it just to get the medal or a trophy? Or what did you feel that is winning? Um, I have like these personal goals uh, that I want to do. And of course, the the... The top goal is always to get the gold medal or to um, or to have a podium spot. But um, some years I'm training and I just know that I am not in the best shape. Um, yeah, whenever I then say like, okay, I can, for example, top five or top ten, I am happy with this. If I achieve this goal for me, then I have already won because that's what I wanted to do that season. I always try to put up like goals that are realistic for myself. Um, I know myself so well, so I know what I can do. Um, also, the same can be, for example, with my dogs. Um, for Unix, for me, the goal was at a certain point just to get her back uh, running again because she was so terrified and scared of everything. Um, I think that's like that's also a winning. Um, each time I improve something with the dogs or if I figure out another method or another training plan that works better for them um, or some just some small things like try to motivate them better that is for me is also winning um, you're growing with the sport you're getting smarter um, you learn more about dogs not every dog is is the same um, I think for me that is also winning it's not only the medal part and what will be an indispensable factor to win? Um, I think the head is the most important. I think your dog needs to have a really good head. Um, it might be a small dog, um, but if she or he wants to run like hell, then uh, you are very much better off with a small dog that pulls like hell than a big dog that only pulls half of the trail. Um, I think the same accounts for people. Um, as long as you want it, as long as your head wants, if you can, as long as you think positive and you know that you can do it and you want to work for it, I think. And which of your competitions have you enjoyed the most? There are many. <laughs> um, I like, for example, trails that are um, a little bit difficult, like with a lot of single trails, a little bit up and down, a lot of left and right, because that's just also uh, where what I'm really good at. Um, I'm also very good in like um, very flat trails <laughs> because I am pretty fast. So that's obviously also the races I enjoy the most because I know that that's where uh, you're kind of shine, or <laughs> how do you say? Do you learn from each competitions? Yes, I do. Every year is different. Not every yeah, every competition is different. Every year is different. Um, I think it's important. Um, you you learn on the road, of course. But um, sometimes a race doesn't go as good as I planned. Of course, I have those races too. Um, but then I will just try to analyze and think. Okay, what could I have done better? And, and then I will just try to implement it in my um, trainings, uh, try to prepare, of course, just better for that race or, or for a, another race. Um, for example, it can be that you have not trained any hills and on this race it was pretty hilly and you felt you were not strong enough in the uphill. Uh, of course, the next time you can implement more hill training or uphill training uh, before you um, go to uh, such a race again. Uh, just like yeah, just like that. And what benefits has this sport brought to your life? What's those things that you like about this sport and why you choose this sport and not just running? I just really like dogs from when I was little. I am very fond of dogs and I just really think 
what's amazing about this sport is the connection you get with your dog. Um, you keep learning from each other and the connection, the bond you have, if you are doing this sport, it just gets so much bigger. Um, uh, it's also, <laughs> I think, pretty boring sometimes to always be alone and to run alone uh, in your races. So it is kind of exciting also to see that uh, both parts have to be uh, perfect fit for each other to make it. So it's not only the race does not only depend on me, it also depends on my dog. Uh, so much more things you have to think of, but I kind of like it. It makes it sometimes more complicated, but um, I think it also makes it more rewarding when uh, it turns out uh, the way you planned or the way you want it. We know that soon you will visit Mexico, my country, and that you will participate in the first international congress of mushing. And is it the first time you will visit Mexico? Uh, yes, I do not know now with Corona when uh, it will be in Mexico. But um, yeah, I am anyway planning to come as soon as the rules uh, are uh, allowing us to travel. Then uh, they can just uh, invite me. And I think it's <laughs> really exciting to be on uh, the other side of the world, basically. And to see how you guys uh, train and uh, do stuff, because uh, I think I can maybe even learn from from something from you guys. Uh, also, like this high temperatures is, for example, something we don't really have. We have high temperatures in Belgium, but not like all the almost the whole year round, uh, like you guys have. Um, I think there it will be very interesting, and also just to see how. Uh, how you guys live, the food, uh, everything. I think it's very interesting to travel. And what are your expectations for this event? What do you like to <laughs> have? <laughs> uh, my expectations. Um, I just hope that everybody is motivated to uh, learn something and to uh, listen. Um, I think I really love uh, Mexican people because you guys are so social and so open and so loving. So uh, I guess I will just feel almost at home there when I am visiting. Uh, I think I will get blown away when I get to Mexico. <laughs> Different culture also. Uh, I think it can be very interesting. <laughs> can you give us a preview of what will you address in the Congress? Um, I think we can like, go a little bit deeper in like um, how you can train yourself and how you can uh, train the dogs, um, like food. Um, uh, for example, uh, I think there are so many different aspects uh, that we can uh, speak of. I can uh, teach the people some exercises uh, which you can do, some tips to, uh, for example, um, teach your dog to pull because not all dogs naturally want to pull. Um, I have some tips that you can use or can try in that case. Um, also some tips like how do you can motivate your dog better um, to go longer distances uh, than your dog is used to. Um, I think there's many things we can talk about, but those are some. <laughs> can you give us a few words so more people can join to do this beautiful sport? Um, I think, for example, canic cross is very easy for everybody to start with. Um, so you just need a bungee leash, a harness, a belt and a pair of shoes. And I would just say go and enjoy. And nobody starts as a world champion and me neither. I didn't start as a world champion either. Um, everybody has to start somewhere and everybody has to can learn um, so I would just say go out with your dogs have fun and um, not everything always has to be so serious um, the biggest factor in this sport is just to have fun with your dog because I think if you don't have fun your dogs kind of feel that energy and um, they will just not, not run as good as if you would be in actually enjoying it um, just so go out there run have fun, don't stress too much.
and hopefully I will see all of you in Mexico soon. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed this interview. Thank you Thank for you your time and we are very excited to meet you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Got a quick hand. You look around the room, won't tell you it's when it's got